Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the rear pinion seal on the basically all Mustangs from the late 70s up until present. And uh, it's pretty much the same seal for the 8.8 inch rear end or the 7.5 inch. And uh, so anyway, I'll take you through this step by step. I do have a full gear install series that I made on this Red Mach 1 when I installed 410 gears. And uh, that'll walk you through the whole thing if you want to take the whole thing apart. Uh, this is a method that's uh, somewhat discouraged in a few ways because you're taking off the pinion nut and not getting that perfect, uh, you know, inch-pound rating on the uh, pinion nut anymore by crushing the, cr the crush sleeve, which is up in the differential. But uh, anyway, without further ado, we'll get into uh, this repair. And I'll put the link to the full install for whole new gears and everything that I did on the Mach 1 in the description so you can see that. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're looking at their rear differential is they see that it's moist and caked up just like this right here at the bottom, and they assume that it's just the gasket for the rear differential cover. But if you follow and see that it's wet up the front of it, then that tells you it's most likely that pinion seal that's on uh, the other side here where the drive shaft ends. And it leaks down and then it accumulates at the bottom and it'll drip at the bottom. But uh, a proper diagnosis is very important. Okay, so we're gonna lift the car in the air in the rear. And I wanna be real specific about this. If you do decide to lift on the rear differential to get both of the wheels off the ground at the same time, that's fine, just do not get it on that cover where you'll bend it. And uh, one of the biggest concerns, you want to chalk the front wheels because the, br the parking brake is for the rear wheels. When the car is in gear, it's for the rear wheels. So as you lift it up, now the car can potentially roll. So you want to chalk the, fr the front wheels and just be real careful with this. Then we're going to go ahead and set it down on those torque boxes. And it's the same place on each side, but you want to put it right where it's shown there so that you don't... Uh, punch it through the floorboard or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and lower this down now. And we're on those torque boxes. Okay, very good. Okay, so the drive shaft bolts take this 12 point, 12 millimeter socket, as you can see, and it is important to use the right amount of teeth on this. Okay, so first we're going to remove the drive shaft. So what you want is to have two of these bolts exposed at the bottom, as you can see here. And you want to pull the parking brake up and even put the car in gear so that uh, it doesn't spin. Then you can break these loose going counterclockwise. And so then what you'll want to do is put the car in neutral. And then as you turn the tire, as you can see, you can rotate the drive shaft. So you'll rotate it till the top two bolts are exposed then pull the e-brake again, put the car back in gear so it's stiff, and then break the other two bolts loose. Now we can unthread all four of these drive shaft bolts and uh, remove the drive shaft from the rear here. Okay, so with the bolts removed, we can now disconnect the drive shaft from the uh, rear flange here. Now note, I did scratch right here on both the flange and the drive shaft U-joint area some markings so I know exactly where to match this back up because it is important to put it back on the way that it came off. Now to separate this, uh, sometimes you can get a screwdriver in here and kind of pry on it. Uh, right where this meets is where it attaches here to this flange. So you want to kind of pry in there a little bit and then just lift it forward and then down. Okay, so you're going to come in with a screwdriver right here, support the drive shaft, and as you pry on it, it will break it away. And now you can push it slightly forward and then drop it down. Okay, so this is the transmission here on the right hand side. And this is the drive shaft going into the transmission. So now all you have to do is pull it straight back. Okay, next we have the pinion nut. Now this is the critical part because when you drive this nut on, it crushes a crush sleeve on the inside 
of, of the differential. And I'll show you that on my uh, gear install video. Now this is taken from my gear install video and I'll put the link in the description, but as you can see here, I'm putting the crush sleeve on and that's a one-time use thing. It can only be crushed once. And so as you can see here, this is on the front of the pinion. And uh, so as you lift it up in there, it's on the backside where we will not be able to access it. You have to crush it down perfectly until there is 20 inch pounds of rotational drag on this called preload. And so as you'll see, you, the only way to get a measurement on this is with only the pinion installed, without the ring gear, without the rest of the carrier. So it's kind of impossible almost to get that right back to where it was. And that crush sleeve is a one-time use. So it's very important that we put this nut pretty much right back where uh, it came from. And so uh, if you tighten it more, you're crunching that crush sleeve more and that can offset the gears and the preload on the the, bin, the pinion bearing everything. And if you don't put it on tight enough, then it's gonna be too loose. Um, this requires 20 inch pounds of rotational drag, which you cannot measure with the rest of the axle all hooked up. And you'll see my other video, I'll show you what I mean. But uh, what we're gonna do basically is count how many threads are here, or even better, was we take our one and one sixteenth inch socket. Once we break this loose, we're gonna count how many full revolutions it takes to remove this nut. And so then when we're putting it back on, we're gonna start it and do the same thing in reverse and count exactly how many revolutions it takes to put it back on and put it back on that same amount that we took it off. So for example, if it took 10 revolutions to get this off, we're gonna put 10 revolutions uh, in the opposite direction to tighten it back down when it's time to put this back on. If it took 10 and a quarter, we're gonna do the same thing, 10 and a quarter uh, to put it back on, if, if that makes sense. And so that way we're gonna get it as close as we can. Now it also does take quite a bit of pressure to crush the crush sleeve, as you'll also see in the video. I needed a big pry bar, uh, a big breaker bar with an extension. So uh, with that said, if we can get it on tight and as tight as we can with a smaller wrench that's not gonna continue to crush that crush sleeve, we should be okay. And we're definitely going to use uh, some red Loctite. Uh, the first time that I did this, uh, I did not use Loctite, uh, it didn't say so in the manual, and that nut walked itself off and the pinion ate the traction lock, so very important. So anyway, our next step now is to break this loose, and then we're going to count how many revolutions it takes to remove the nut. Um, you don't have the drive shaft anymore here to help lock it in place with the, with the transmission gears. All you really have at this point are the rear brakes. So you can have somebody sit in the car and hold the brakes real tight while you break this loose. And uh, you can have the handbrake pulled up as tight as you can, but uh, it, it will take quite a bit to get this off. We're gonna go ahead and spray it with some liquid wrench and let it sit for a minute. Okay, so I broke the nut free. Uh, the parking brake was applied. I was able to break it free with a breaker bar. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm looking at this socket and it has this hole right here on it. That's my reference point, because this is obviously a ratcheting socket wrench. So I'm lining this up right here at the bottom. Okay, and now I'm gonna count how many times that circle goes around, and I'm gonna know exactly how many revolutions it takes to put this nut right back where it is when we go to reinstall it. Okay, so I'm gonna save you the time here, but basically I ratcheted this bad boy around. I counted every time that that circle had come all the way full circle, and it ended up being 16 and a half rotations until the nut came off. 16 and a half, it's right there at the top. We're gonna to write that down. We got a marker here. 16 and a half. It had a tiny bit as well to break it loose, so when we get into that range, we know we're, we're pretty close. You could also use the marker to mark down the socket if you didn't have a reference point on it like this uh, hole here that we had. Okay, so now our pinion nut's off. We're gonna put our puller on here, 
and it's going to push against the pinion and pull the flange off. Okay, so next we've installed our puller. As you can see, there's a jaw on the bottom and there's a jaw on the opposite side. And then there's a shaft that goes right in there until it touches the uh, pinion. And it has a little cone on it so it sits down inside the pinion so it doesn't hurt the threads in any way. Okay, and so this is what it looks like set up. And as we crank on this one with our socket, it's going to push that post against the pinion and then the flange is going to be pulled off. It's going to lose some fluid here, so you'll want some kind of bucket. Okay, so got a cup here to catch as much of this as we can. Okay, so we're free. Okay, so here's a view of this with the flange off. As you can see, the jaws were grabbing it from the back and then it was going right into that pinion, the front of the pinion there with this cone shape. So as we simply tightened this up, it pulled the uh, flange right off. Okay, so this is one of the puller jaws that we use to get that uh, flange off. And so you need something like this with an L shape to, to dig into that uh, seal and pop it out from the backside without marring up the pinion um, or anywhere that uh, there's threads. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you this. We have one of these wedged in there already and as I'm popping it out, it's pulling on that seal pretty nicely. Now they do make a specific claw hammer for this. Um, you can try a regular hammer, the claw end of it, but you just want to be careful not to mar anything up. As you'll see here, I'm just kind of going around and prying on it, and eventually uh, the whole thing just pops right out. So you want to be really careful with this that you're not marring anything up. As you can see, as we just pull on that outer edge, that's what you're wanting to do and you'll see how the entire seal comes out here. And there's an oil slinger behind it, a little plate. You don't want anything else to come out other than just the seal. Okay, so we cleaned up this area really well. There's a little bit of gasket maker and stuff from the factory that was inside there. So it's all smooth now. I even took uh, a small piece of uh, really high grit, like 2000 grit sandpaper, and just smoothed it out on this outer edge where the seal will also go in. So now all we have to do is line up the new seal and just tap it into place. Okay, so for the new seal, this is something I do. This is a personal thing. I take the Ultra Black Permatex gasket maker and I smear just a very, very light, light, light amount on the inside here of the, uh, the gasket. So as we punch this back on, uh, it will seal this up just a little bit better and some of it might squirt out at the very you know front But uh, anyway, like I said, this is optional rather than just pu pushing the seal back in a thin super light I mean, I spread this with my finger. It's pretty thin uh, You know, but uh, anyway just a very thin coating around this and I'm gonna now just tap this right back into the front of the housing Okay, so we've set this up in here now and we're just going to take our rubber mallet and very evenly start tapping it to get it to seat right in. So you'll feel that it is a tight fit and it does need to be tapped in in order to go in. So we're going to go ahead and just start tapping it in and get it to seat right up into that housing. Okay, so this is seating really nicely. I just went around with my, my hammer. You want to look at it from the side and make sure it's going in evenly. And uh, you don't want to really pound too much on this part of the seal, just this outer part. So I just went around like this and just gave it some good pounding all the way around. And uh, so now it's sitting nice and flush. Okay, so the new seal is now pounded back in. We're going to go ahead and line up our, our flange and then just use uh, the pinion nut to tighten it back down. Okay, so on our flange here, we cleaned it out the best that I could all along here where it's going to seal up 
Just want to make sure that it's smooth and clean again without any debris that's going to allow oil to get through it. Uh, now this can just slide back in and we can look at the mar marks that we made on it here for that to uh, and just line it up in that same orientation too just in case. But we're going to go ahead and just uh, line this up. Now uh, also I have a new um, well, this is a one-time use when I was setting up gears once. Uh, new nut here. They say you can buy a new one and you should because it has that Loctite already in it. Um, here's the old one. You can see it's the same. And this one was actually slightly different. came in a different kit. So I'm going to go with this one. And I'm also going to put some red Loctite thread locker on these threads because we do not want this nut walking off. Okay, so we've lifted this flange up here, and it's in place. We've lined up the teeth onto the pinion. And so you're not really going to get it on by hitting it, and I wouldn't try. Just go ahead, and uh, we're going to put Loctite on here. And then we're just going to start this, uh, this nut. And uh, as you remember, it took 16 and a half revolutions to get it off. So once it started here... We're going to put it on 16 and a half revolutions and see where we are. Okay, so I just went around my 16 and a half times. It came out just about perfect. Uh, I was using that hole as a reference, so I knew how many full revolutions. Okay, this was a newer nut. You can see some of its inner Loctite that's been coming out from it. And I also did put red Loctite on it, so it's not moving anywhere. It's normal to have a small gap right here. Sorry for my long fingernails, but it's working on cars. Sometimes you need them. So anyway, you can see the seals back there, and then you can see the new, you know, you can see where the flange goes, and it's okay to have that small gap. That's normal. Okay. Uh, something to note is when I was doing the gear install on the Mach 1, uh, you'll notice it takes quite a bit of pressure to crush that crush sleeve. You're talking a breaker bar with an extension. So with that said, if all you're using under here is this size of a half inch wrench and you're cranking on it good and tight, you know, unless you've got grizzly bear hands, you're probably not going to exceed where that crush sleeve had been crushed. And so when I did my 16 and a half, I felt it pretty much bottom back up to the to the crush sleeve, and so that's how I knew that it was good as well. So I, I think if you don't have it counted perfectly, a backup would be just to crank it down until you can't anymore, but it is tight going on here, so it's kind of because you're pushing this flange on. So sometimes it is hard to decide if you've gone far enough or not. Counting these threads here can be kind of difficult, so... The way we did it where we just counted how many it took to take it off and put it on that same amount, it came out pretty much dead even. Okay, so there's our marks that we made with the screwdriver on both the flange and the drive shaft. Putting these in, and we'll put just a dab of red Loctite on them. Isn't going to hurt anything, so we'll just kind of tighten these down uh, and then we'll release the parking brake and spin it and put the other two in and then tighten them and uh, then just add our fluid. Okay, so for the diff plug, we're just using an extension. Okay, 3 8 inch. So, no socket on it. That extension goes into the plug, and that's how you remove the plug out of here. Okay, so we're going to pretty much put a tube up in here with a pump. And we're going to put the car on the ground with the tube in here, and we're going to fill it until it overflows. Okay, so this is like our $7 pump from Harbor Freight. We're just going to hook one end up with the new diff fluid and put the other tube end inside that differential. Okay, so we pumped our 75W90 gear oil and just pumped it up in here until it started overflowing with the car on the ground. Okay, so you should be able just to come in here with the wrench and put that drain plug back in. If you cannot fit under here to do this, then at least jack it up on the driver's side rear so that uh, you lose the least amount of fluid doing so. Um, but uh, anyway, we're just going to put this plug back in. Don't put it in too tight because it is just a plug. It doesn't really have a head on it, so you literally could drive it all the way into the differential. 
So once it's in there good and snug, go ahead and clean everything up. Uh, you may notice I did take off the uh, balancer. It's just a big block of, uh, <laughs> it's a dampener really is all it is. It's two bolts and I took that whole thing off because uh, I just want to clean this up a lot better and that's just for some vibration and, and all that. So it's not really 100% necessary. I don't think I even have it on my Mach 1. So anyway, uh, after you tighten that up, you should be good to go.